damas y caballeros, bienvenidos a IWC. Oh, whoa, 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 Fox, what are you doing? This is the English version. I don't know where you're going oh, with the oh, Spanish oh, there. Sorry, Our sorry. Welcome to Proving Ground. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bearcat, Keith Hot. Our kickoff match here at Proving Ground 5 out in the ruralist of valleys, rural valley, Pennsylvania. I am joined by Nick Lindell. Nick, how are you doing tonight? Well, I'm doing pretty good, Jake. My IWC tonight. I've been waiting for this for a long time, ready to have some fun. Well, if you want fun, you got the right guy in the ring. Keith Hunt, always a crowd pleaser. Oh, look at the Bearcat dance. What that crowd please is gonna have to stop when the bell rings because Chris LaRusso is ready to go here tonight. And his opponent accompanied the ring by Benjamin C. Steele, right out from Pennsylvania, weighing 185 pounds, the Air Pirate Chris LaRusso. This is Chris's first match here in IWC. Uh, he made quite an appearance. Um, a few months back, letting uh, our super indie champ, Andrew Palace, know that he was here and he was gunning for him. So, th look at this as Chris LaRusso taking that first step up the ladder, uh, stepping into the ring with the Bearcat. And you gotta imagine if LaRusso gets a victory tonight, he's gonna be in the right direction for that IWC super indie championship. Well, yeah, you have to imagine he's here to prove that he came to IWC and calls himself the heir apparent for a very specific reason. And he's accompanied to the ring by Benjamin C. Steele. I'm just going to let you know, Ben Steele knows how to make sure that things happen the way he wants them to happen. He thought's going to have to have eyes in the back of his head in this match, it looks like. All right, here's the bell. We're a set opening match here at Proving Ground. And you can see Hot already entertaining the crowd. Guy up here. Into the corner as the ref starts his count. Hot breaks up the count. I like the ferocity from Keith Hot. Pushing LaRusso back to the corner. Did he grab hair? I don't know. That's not right. Up oh, there, you there see. I was just about to say with the hair pulling, Chris LaRusso's going to take any advantage he can get. Open some eyes here in IWC. He thought out his fun, and now Chris LaRusso is doing what he came here to do. There we go. Sends Hot off the ropes. Oh! Hard elbow, Hot goes down. Chris LaRusso showing he's not even breaking a sweat yet. Checks his hair. There's always time for primping. Ask the prophet of profit, Chris Maverick, about that. Ooh. Hard shot in the corner as you hear the fans. Oh, he's... Oh. Hot with some chops of his own here, Jay. He has some power. A block. Oh. And firing back. Making sure he's laying those, oh! Going sumo strike style. Looks like we're gonna see some sort of high impact move here from Hot. And Steele pulls LaRusso out of the way. Smart, get him out of the way, oh. And Hot caught in a hot shot. <laughs> see what I did there? Next Bulldog from the top from LaRusso. His IWC debut, he should be going for a cover there. Seems more interested in what these fans think of him. Or oh, maybe I, what he thinks of himself. I guarantee it's more what he thinks of the fans than what the fans there think of go. him. Good elbow strike to the back of the head. That really, that, that, they use the phrase ring your bell. But really, it disorients you getting it. hit in the back of the head. Absolutely, Jay. You ever been hit in the back of the head? Not in a wrestling ring. My wife sometimes. Oh. Talk to her about that. That's another story. Oh. 
Powerful leg drop from LaRusso into the cover. And a kick out from Keypot. Casual cover. I mean, I understand that he feels that he has this already won, but you cannot take Keith Hot as a as a foregone conclusion. If you're gonna pin him, get the weight up over. Well, I don't know if he takes uh, Keith Hot as an easy opponent or if he just thinks everybody's below him, Jay. Oh well, I mean he is the heir apparent. Hard oh! close line from LaRusso. What a shot. <laughs> Looks like it might be time for the Bearcat to go hibernate. That <laughs> one hurt. Ooh. And then just a, a, a rake to the forehead and eyes with the sole of that boot. Able to pick up Hot and slam him with the body slam. Now he's gonna roll into the uh, cover there. There we Another go, a little more weight over the shoulders. Chris LaRusso calling for the mic. What's this here? Give me the mic! Hold on. Hey! This is the best that IWC's got! Hot dog! You know, I see why you people like this guy. He looks like a butterball truck and he smells like ham. You can relate to a sack of garbage like this. Hey! He showed a lot of heart. He showed a lot of intestinal fortitude, but he is a piece of. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't Maybe a piece of him. ham. I feel that was a bit disrespectful. He didn't let him finish his sentence. I think all that did was light a fire under Keypot. A piece of what? Oh, and close line. The Russo up in a second. The Russo up off his back. Hard hot, that was a slam! There's a hard forearms into the corner. A little bit of a bionic elbow action from Hot there, Farnsworth. Yep, yep. Laying in this, laying in this joint strike. Oh! Can't use it as weight to his advantage. Five minutes gone by, five minutes gone by. Thank you, That'll Dave. take the air out of you. Thanks to Dave Kitch for that reminder. Can he do this? Can he so pull it down? down? No! Knocking the wind out of LaRusso, and LaRusso had the power to kick out of that one. Oh, you got it. Again, you got to put the weight over his shoulders. Grab a leg, Keith. You know better. His hard kicks from Keith Hot is the big one. LaRusso ducks out of the way. Oh! Centon! Centon from Keith Hot. Russo needs to catch his breath. He was going for the leg there. And you can see Benjamin C. Steele starting to worry in the corner. Maybe his, uh, maybe his client doesn't have this in hand as much as he thought he did. Oh. Russo thinking, getting himself a breather. Uh-oh. Hot looks We've like he's going upstairs. Before. He calls it the hot mess. This splash hits, it's all over. Oh, and he gave him too much time, Farnsworth. LaRusso able to roll out of the way and now hot. Works for the wear here. And hot the first to his feet though. Oh, oh hard knee from LaRusso. Knee to the head. Oh. Snapmare driver. Looks like it could be it. And that'll do it. Chris LaRusso gets his Please win in his debut here in IWC. Chris LaRusso! He wanted everyone to know why he's in IWC. Well, there's your answer. Little unnecessary there after the bell. Blowing his nose right on Keith Hot. Keith Hot gave him a run for his money here tonight, Farnsworth. This wasn't a, a blowover victory. Oh, not at all. Keith Hot is a heck of a competitor. This is a great win for Chris LaRusso. Uh, what's this? Uh, LaRusso has the T-shirt of the IWC Super Indie Champion, Andrew Callis, obviously sending a message here. Oh! There you go, lay him in. Oh. Here comes Remy LeVay! Remy LeVay! Coming out here to help Keith Hart! 
don't know what Lave is thinking, sticking his nose where it doesn't belong here. Oh! Lave is incensed. I know they have, he's teamed with Hawk before, but this is not his hill to die on. I don't know, Farnsworth. It looks like Steele's telling LaRusso to get out of Dodge. I don't think LaRusso wants any part of... The match is over. Why wouldn't he? He's got his win. He's got his, his winner's purse. Get out of there. Typical fashion LaRusso talking on his way out. Well, he still had a little more to say. Well, you know, he got the win, but Keith Hart's going to be back. Nice opening contest here at Proving Ground. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a triple threat match scheduled for one fall to the finish. Introducing first, from Dayton, Ohio, weighing 185 pounds, Colin Flight. Well, Farnsworth, we're in for a good one here. Three high flyers ready to show IWC that they belong here on the big show. This is a uh, Torrent Flight's first match here at IWC, so we get a, we get a good introduction. He's uh, taking on, uh, however, one of the greatest high flyers in IWC history. Of course, you're talking about the legend Super Hentai. Uh, absolutely. If you're, if you're going to take a bite, you may as well take a big one. And that's exactly what these two young men have done. If one of these men can score a victory, better if that score a victory over Super Hentai in this match, they're going to be well on their way here in the future with IWC. And making his way to the ring, he is a former four-time Super Indie Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the IWC legend, Super Hentai! Here he is, Farnsworth. When you talk about the Super Indie title, what you need to realize is that the value of that title was elevated on the back of that man. When you talk about IWC, you need to understand that that is the bulldog at the door. If you want in, you got to pass his test. And the opponent from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, weighing 195 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, this is Noctis! comes the man making his IWC debut tonight also, Noctis. There you see Dennis Gregory staring down Noctis, I don't know. Well, he's trying to psych him out before the match starts. He's just making sure Noctis doesn't take a cheap shot on Super Hentai. You know what, Farnsworth, these guys, they, you know, they might have a great future, but they are going up against Super Hentai. I, I, you know, in their first match, I can't put any of these guys over Super Hentai. I'm, I'm going with Hentai in this match. I have to. It's a safe bet. Well, Hentai engaging with the... Uh, IWC fan base here in Rural Valley. And Ty letting the crowd know. <laughs> Wants to see who's the most popular. And Noctis gonna get his chance now. Well, yeah. Oh, there we go. There's Super Red Ty. Some might call that a cheap shot. That's just the veteran experience for yeah. hentai. Yes, yeah, hentai said, nothing personal, kid. Welcome to the business. Don't turn your back on any opponent. Never turn your back on super hentai. Oh, oh right to the knees. Hentai, quick flurry of offense here into the quick cover and a kicked out from Torn Flight. 
short uh, short Rana driving his head into the mat. Oh, jawbreaker by Flight. Checking his jaw right in time for Noctis to come off the top rope with a nice springboard. Oh, right into the, into the pin. Smart. Ideally, you don't want this match to go any longer than it needs to. If you can get the pin in 30 seconds, by all means. And you gotta think, Farnsworth, the longer this match goes, you gotta give the advantage to Super Hentai. Just that veteran instinct, he knows where he is at every point in that ring. Well, he also knows that he can't get counted out, so you can see he's taking his time getting back in. Let Why these not? two young guys... Let, yeah, absolutely. Let the two young guys work the match. Head scissors there. May have landed a little rough on the neck. What's Hentai doing? Grabbing a steel chair. Well, he might just take a seat. Yeah, he needs a he needs a place to sit. Good shoulder. Flip by Noctis to the ropes. Oh, good flying shoulder tackle. Well, it looks like Hentai's breather might be over as he sets the chair back. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the ring, Noctis in control of torn flight. You can tell Noctis has a slight height advantage. But oh, wow. head scissors. Torian Flight seems to be quick. Laying kicks into the side of the leg. That'll slow you down the more, the, the more you get hit with those. Climbing the, the ropes top. here. What are we going to see here? Oh! The springboard hurricane run, and Noctis rolls out of the ring. And you keep in mind, Hentai's out oh. there and hits him with the forearm. And, with a, and another welcome to the business. It's kind of sweet, actually. Oh, the ropes. Torn Flight takes out Noctis and Hentai. Corkscrew Plancha didn't quite get the rotation. Ended up almost sentoning on both of them. But I, I still think he landed as much as he needed to. Oh, yeah. Now all three of these guys slow to get up. Referee CJ Sensation, the first back into the ring. And Torin Flight now taking on Hentai. Arabian Press! Kick out from Hentai as Noctis is about to get back in the ring. Seems like a fresher man at this point going to the top rope. I want to say smart, not getting into the ring and engaging them, trying to get an advantage getting to the top. Flight had that one well scouted there, Jay. Almost waited for him to come off the ropes. Very, yeah. Buried a shot to his gut. And now Noctis working his way out of this situation. A nice head scissor uh, takeover on both. Noctis takes them both out off the ropes and a double clothesline. Noctis gaining the momentum as he strikes Hentai, one for flight also. And he's getting warned about the fists. Slams him down to Noctis. Good body slam. And now he turns his attention to flight, but flight was ready for him. Oh, it's like the knee. The, the knee caught him in the side of the head there, Jay. Hentai slow to get to the top. Flight. A good kick to the shoulder. And now Ter <clears throat> sorry, Torin Flight. Going to the top, chasing after Hentai. A shot to the gut. Looks like we're gonna see some high impact move here, Fornsworth. Looks like Hentai's in control of the situation. Flight, no. Nope. Flight counters, gets to the top with him. You gotta be kidding me! And right into Noctis, who hits him with the tornado DDT. And now all of a sudden it's Noctis who's on top with the cover. And Flight there for the there to interrupt. Five minutes gone by. Five minutes gone by. It's a good thing Flight was able to interrupt that pinfall. I don't know if Hentai would have kicked out there. Yeah, I mean, Noct normally you say pull him away from everyone and try and get the pin, but he had the momentum. He had the chance there. He was hoping that uh, Flight was out of it.
fans getting into it. I don't think they're behind one clear guy here, Farnsworth. I think the fans are just into this match. I agree. I want to point out Hentai, the veteran, getting out of the ring. He just took all that offense, gives him a chance to breathe. Also make sure he doesn't get pinned. Oh. And the Pele from Noctis. Right to the jaw. Flight slow to his feet. Noctis looks like he may be setting up for another top rope move, perhaps another Tornado DDT. Could be seeing it. He has the face lock. Not no, Flight caught him, sets him back, back on the ropes. Over. And a kick. That may have dazed Noctis here. You but can... keep in mind, if you look on the other end of the ring, Hentai catching his breath. Hentai's waiting. He's smart. He knows it. He knows they're not paying attention to him. He knows he doesn't have to do anything to play in his next move. You know what, Farnsworth? I think these two guys might be so worried about making an impact in their first appearance in oh. the IWC. But they go for risks like that, and sometimes, as you see, they, they, they don't pay off. Looks, it looks like he slipped. He grabbed him, brought him down, and almost a face plant. It looks plant. like he, he did slip off and the ropes, Oh, double times that perfectly. Times that perfectly into the back. Victory, like I said, Flight might have slipped off the ropes, but it looked like Noctis got the worst for wear. Roll him out of the ring, Hentai gets the cover. That's the veteran right instinct, over. absolutely, Farnsworth. Hentai knew exactly what he was doing. He looked for his spot when it presented itself. Well, he, your winner, Super Hentai. A good outing by both Noctis and Torrin Flight. And as Just you see now, their day and. To be honest, uh, it was a big, like I said, it was a big bite to take. Super Hentai is nothing to sneeze at. They, they did a great showing against them. And if you see in the ring here, Super Hentai, you know, my guess is that both of these gentlemen gained Super Hentai's respect, as you see. These guys will be back, believe me. They'll be back, but for now, tonight, the night is Hentai. Congratulations to Super Hentai on a well-earned win. Introducing first is Challenger, and a total combined weight of 495 pounds. The team of Bronco McBride, and that's the best, the Blue Collar Squad. Well, this is going to be a good one, Farnsworth. The new champions, the fraternity, taking up the challenge of the Blue Collar Slaughterhouse. This is going to be a good one. I'm just lucky we're about four rows back. Two good old boys who like to just throw punches and beat the crap out of whatever they can get. And make no mistake about it, they like gold also. They want to be the IWC Tag Team Champions. having their fun with our and ring announcer. their opponents from the Ivy League with a total combined SAT score of nearly 4,000. The team of Channing Decker and Trent Gibson, the Fraternity. Drinks in hand, titles in tow. You know the fraternity is here for business. Well, Farnsworth, Trent Gibson, Channing Decker, Won the IWC Tag Team titles in a full of Wait, 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 right shut up. Let the music you smart oh, here up, we go. tech junkies. Here we go. Just because you asked, my name is Channing Decker. This That's is Trent Gibson. We are the fraternity. You're IWC Tag Team Champion. We know who you are. We know who you are. It's exactly pieces of crap like this guy right here that bring this company down. I don't know about that guy. He paid for the just like everybody else. PWG, IWC, this company used to stand for something. But guess what? The 
liquidity is here, whoa, to make the IWC great again. Well, that is our campaign, Fonsworth. They're going to make wrestling great again here in But before I continue, why the hell is Virgil here, and why is he dressed like the Million Dollar Man? You freaks, you guys are freaks. That's a good you question. Freaks. That's a very fair question. Surprised this table isn't set up. I'm more concerned about Papa Strong than Sayo. But it wouldn't be very like if I didn't offer you boys a drink. Breath, if you don't mind, we're just going to do that. Well, the Slaughterhouse, they like to drink, but they're ready to fight tonight. And he's offering Bronco a drink. What do you think's in there? Just beer, or what do you think? I'm not sure, but Chug, the fraternity Chug, guys make Chug, up their own concoction, I'm Chug, sure. Chug, Chug, Oh, well, that's disrespectful. That's not going to go well with our tag team champions, let me tell you that much. That's not going to go with, well with a lot of people. That would be called a party foul. Chanting stuff. Now the bell sounds, and we're off here for the IWC Tag Team Titles. And Bronco taking quick control of Channing. Really a contrast of personalities here. <laughs> Absolutely, Jay. These guys couldn't be more opposite. Nice double team suplex as he goes for the cover. Bronco slapping his head, trying to wake him up a little, getting him to stand up just so he can beat him back down. That is how blue collar slaughterhouse works. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're they're a few IQ points shy of a shy of a special bus. Yeah, but and, you don't need to be smart to be a tag team champion. Well, Jay. but it, it certainly helps, as is evident by the fact that the almost 4,000 points in their SAT scores. Well, most of the time, the that just is helps them to cheat. Their waist. Well, not literally right now, but... Those IQs have helped them cheat in the past, and I'm sure they're going to do any trick they can to keep those titles around their waist as they leave Royal Valley this evening. You say help you cheat, I say help you win. Well, it's not cheating unless you get caught, right? Exactly! And a big toss by, uh... Sorry, Sigaris. by Matt Sigaris. Tags in McBride. And the top, the handoff. And you notice the blood rushing to the head here. Hey, you know what it's just it whenever they want to drop him. Oh, oh, oh. Channing in to break it up. What is this, a double? No. No. There it is. The double suplex. And the slaughterhouse gaining momentum here. When brains don't work, you resort to brawn, and then Slaughterhouse has it in spades. And now, the, now the fraternity taking a taking a breather outside, a little regrouping. Well, they better put their IQs together now and figure out how they are going to get past the Slaughterhouse because right now it looks like they don't even want to get in the ring. It looks like they're leaving, Jay. Taking a walk. They're leaving. I don't blame them. Well, you know what? This is for the tag team titles. The Slaughterhouse isn't going to let them get away that easy. They, get, they keep the title. in mind the IQ, you know, like you brought up before, they don't need to be, they don't need to pin to uh, get out of here. They get counted out, they keep the titles. Exactly, and that winner's purse. Right now it looks like uh, Blue Collar Slaughterhouse looking to beat the IQ right out of them. But 
chop to the chest. This is just turning into a slugfest outside the ring here. I didn't see. Was that Channing that went over the ring? I couldn't tell which one it was, but it looks like they're both getting the boots taken yeah, to them right now. There's Trent back in the ring. Tag as Segaris makes his way back into the ring, measures them, kick right into the ribs. And man, it has been all blue collar slaughterhouse. They have just taken control and kept it. Segaris keeping the keeping uh, keeping the fraternity from getting a tag. Oh, there's a good. There's that IQ coming into play. Was that a close Well, because Segaris needs to turn around because he runs right into the big boot from Trent Gibson. Other way, he needed to turn it around. Otherwise, I would have hit him in the back of the head. Kick out. I thought my, that might have been all she wrote for Segaris. That kick caught him right above the eye, it looked like. Huge boot. Now Channing in. Referee needs to do a little better job of getting the fraternity to their neutral corner here. They have that five count to work with. And now, another tag, some quick tags by the fraternity, trying to keep each other fresh. And now look at McBride trying to save his partner and the referee will have none of it. And as the fraternity no better. Double team and Segaris in the corner. Well, they just he just walked right into the trap that they set. Get him frustrated and then double team. Smart move by the fraternity. What a slam to Segaris. Oh. And yes, that is what they mean by the Eiffel Tower spot. You ever partake in any Eiffel Towers in your day, Jay? Five minutes gone by. No, I never wrestled. Once again, McBride losing his goal, and it's costing Segaris. He's only hurting his partner. He needs to think, he needs to be smart like the fraternity. Well, what he needs to do right now is make the tag to Bronco McBride and get some rest, get that fresh man in if they want a shot at taking down the fraternity. Well, that's going. Segaris swinging wildly. Chan and Decker staying on him, making sure he doesn't get over from the tag. Grounding him. McBride firing up the crowd. Trying to breathe some life into Segaris. Hard elbows. That was a picture perfect drop kick from Channing Decker. Decker with the cover. Textbook. Doesn't get much better than that. But Segaris did kick out, so it did not get the job done. McBride getting warned again. He keeps this up. He may lose it for his team. I'll tell you what, that's the last thing Blue Collar Slaughterhouse wants is to get DQ'd here. Uh, yeah. Title shots don't come along every day. You make the most of each and every one you get. Segaris firing back. And now Trent and Channing taking control again, cutting the ring off. It's smart wrestling. Just those frequent tags, textbook tag team wrestling. Oh! And Segaris rolling the wrong way. He's in the wrong corner. That might have been the last little bit of energy Segaris had. Let's see if he has enough to get to that corner and tag in McBride. Clear the cobwebs. It looks like uh, it looks like Channing has him by the ankle. Some back. Pushes him off. Can Trent stop it? No, there's and the here tag! Comes Bronco McBride! Close line to six. Takes down Gibson! Takes down Decker! He wants them both! And oh! Coconut! But now it looks like he's cleaning house, preferably. 
Bronco McBride, that's like a freight train coming at you in the corner. Yeah, that's a lot of weight to have pressed into you. Uh-oh, that's definitely not where Trent wants to be. Or Channing, I'm sorry. Oh, the Bronco. Bronco's McBride Bronco. Bron Bron Bronco. Well, whatever you want to call it. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. And that's not going to do the fraternity any favors later tonight at their party. They gotta, do they gotta do some reevaluate? And there's the tag. I don't know that Sagaris is at 100% to come back in. It doesn't look in. like he's ready. And a double cannonball! What impact from Sagaris! Rolls into the cover! Oh, and a save! Trent Gibson saving the, the, the titles for his team there. And McBride still in. Just in the nick of time. McBride over the top rope. Oh! Well, Sagaris thought he had him right where he wanted him, and looks like the tables have turned. Oh, well, we've seen this finish before the tag stand. Gibson cuts off Sagaris. That is the win. Gentlemen, the winners of this contest and still IWC Tag Team Champions, Zebra Trinity. Hell of a match. A great match, a good effort by Blue Collar Slaughterhouse. But you can't compete with people with the, the pedigree, the prestige, the intelligence of men like the fraternity. Yeah, you can argue that these fraternity guys, you know, they they were they might have just been born better. Uh, well, I think they proved they're born better. Look at this win. A blue collar slaughterhouse is now walking the park. And now that's a little insulting. Kicking the guy out of the ring. You just won. You, you're still the tag team champions. Why, why you gotta kick the guy out of the ring? It's their ring. That's not a little insulting. It's a lot insulting. That's the point. for one fall. Introducing first from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 270 pounds, grinding Jack Sheridan. Well, we've heard a lot about Jack Sheridan. This is his debut in IWC, the former college football player. He stands 6'6", but Dennis Gregory's no small man. No, not at all. But I want you to take a look at the caliber of athlete that Northwestern University produces. He's a cut above everyone else in that locker room. Clearly, by the way he's dressed, he thinks so also. with the people in attendance here at Proving Ground 5. I can't say I blame them. I mean, when you're, when you're used to the caliber of person the Northwestern produces in that area, that, that lifestyle, this must seem like trying to walk through a, 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 a mud hole. And his opponent is a former He walks the talk, but here comes the test for Jack Sheridan. Like I said, it's the same with Super Hit Time. You want to talk about a legend in IWC, Dennis Gregory. Of course, one of the founding fathers here in IWC, and just like he helped uh, accompany Super Hentai for his match, looks like Hentai's coming out here to stand with Dennis. I want to say. He's a multi-time IWC heavyweight champion. And the reason is, if you had to pick a superpower for Dennis Gregory, it's he knows how to win. It doesn't matter what he's facing, he'll figure out where the weak spot is and exploit it. I'm a big fan of Dennis, but you know, he's stepping into the ring with quite a challenge. He's an unknown commodity, 
but that doesn't mean he's not dangerous, you know? Well, we're about to see how dangerous Jack Sheridan is as soon as that bell rings. Stalking the ring. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jack Sheridan already making some friends with the fans here, Jay. Like Dennis Gregory always says, you're either a Gregory or you're a wannabe. Oh, you heard that. Slaps him right in the face, Farnsworth. Well, it is not often you see Dennis Gregory go face to face with someone and you have to look up at them. Dennis Gregory is no slouch of a, of a human being, you know what I mean. Well, the question is, what did that do for the psyche of Jack Sheridan moments before he's about to tie up for the first time here in IWC, getting slapped right across the face, Farnsworth? Well, I want to point out, you can tell he's angry now. So let's find out if he's distracted. Let's find out if, if the uh, that fire game that he just put in play is going to work. Versus it. Well, Dennis was never one to be quiet during his matches. Very true. And there we go. Top wrist lock. Oh, and he's doing a little primping for him. That's nice of him. Oh, oh. shoulder tackle right into the ropes. Sheridan's used to having someone uh, hit him like that. Reverses it off the ropes. Big hip toss. And another one from Gregory. A good arm drag. Oh, and Sheridan in retreat. He may be thinking twice about this one. And Sheridan distracted by the fans jawing with him. I mean, you, you know, it's his first match, but at the same time, this guy has to realize you're in there with an IWC legend. What these fans say to you right now doesn't really matter. Exactly. Pay attention to the multi-time IWC champion in the ring with you, looking to cause you physical pain. Oh, good knee to the gut. And sends him out to the floor. Got to be a little embarrassing for the big man, don't you think? Well, Sheridan has the power, but Dennis Gregory has the answers. That's the that's the problem that Sheridan's running into. Here's an experience of taught Dennis Gregory how to how to zig when someone else zags. So what I'm saying is Dennis Gregory is great at zigging. Well, Sheridan better turn around. Again, the veteran instinct. Sheridan needs to know where his opponent is. Well, also, Sheridan, there we go. Good hard right hand. Just peppering him right into, into the skull of Dennis Gregory. And now into that ring post, you're seeing the power of Sheridan. And that's a mistake. Sheridan shouldn't be resting in the ring. He should stay on Dennis Gregory. Now, I'll you tell have you what, the advantage. Press it. You get in a fight with the ring post, the ring post is going to win every time, Jay. I tied once with one. That was a long time ago. And Dennis slow to get it back in the ring, taking advantage of that account. Has to bring him oh. in the hard way. 
away, and all that did was benefit Gregory. Fez pressed on top of him, hard strikes. And Gregory's fired up now. He thought he was going to slingshot him in the end. Again, Gregory was ready for it. And he hit second gear on him and just slew Fez him right down. A good hard fist right to the back of the head. Splash into the corner from Gregory. And now Gregory just having his way with him, just throwing him into the corner and splash. Oh! Gregory catches him himself. Oh, he caught the boot. the boot, swings him around. Seguri hits the mark and Gregory may be out. Five minutes gone by. Five minutes gone by. He had answer after answer there. And finally Jack Sheridan connecting. Good hard kick to the head. You can tell it, it rung Dennis Gregory's bell. And now it looks like for the first time in this match, Sheridan is in control. He's not pressing the control. That's it. Stay on him, kid. Put the boots to him. Hit him. If you can, poke him in the eye. I mean, when the ref's not looking. There you go. You gotta think, what would a win over Dennis Gregory do for the career of Jack Sheridan moving forward here in IWC? It elevates him right to the top of the charts. You have to believe if he shows up and beats Dennis Gregory, he has to be in line for a title shot at some point. You show up and make that big of an impact, everyone notices. But the key part of that. Frogged him. Oh, what a super kick. And that connected. Gregory needs to go for the cover. And right in the bush, Gregory with the pin. That's the end. Now, CJ Sensation might want to look around the ring, see if there's any teeth rolling around. Souvenirs for the fans. Well, he didn't get the win, but I'm impressed with Jack Sheridan. The kid has size, and he might have a future here. He has size, he has strength. All he needs is uh, a few more matches under the belt to start learning those tricks. Someday we may be look talking about Jack Sheridan as the legend of IWC. And even in defeat, talking trash on his way out, the cocky Jack Sheridan as he makes his way to the back. Ladies and gentlemen, the following eight-man tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first to be making their way to the ring, accompanied by Ginger, a team of 42 minutes in. Commentary with DJ Worthington Farnsworth, and well, you're here too, kid. I'm here. I'm here. Honor. I'm the one that's hot. Are you kidding me? We're sitting here with Benjamin C. Steele. By the way, I need to say, my mom loved the roses you sent. She oh, loved them. Good. I'm glad she got them. Corey Futuristic letting everyone know what happens in this match. He is from the future. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. You know, I have heard that. Has he told you who wins the 2016 election? Wow. I actually know. I can't spoil it. That's how they dance in the future. Team we got 
coming down to the aisle here. You see. And, you know, it's, it's funny because he said the reigning IWC Super Indy Champion. The only reason he's the reigning champion is because LaRusso has not taken it from him as of yet. Well, I figured you were going to try to sneak that in, and you did it. So maybe this match we don't have to talk about LaRusso anymore, and we can just watch this. What do you think? Well, I can tell you a lot about LaRusso, but for me, this is a scouting mission. Oh, okay, okay. It looks to me that Palace has not noticed you out here yet. Oh, he's noticed me, believe me. And he should notice me. He needs to have eyes in the back of his head. And one fourth of this team, Santana Diamonds, in his IWC hey. debut here tonight. Before we. Shut up! Before we get this party started, I thought I should let you all know what my big announcement is. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Big announcement? I didn't hear anything about this. Pop Nasty might be the Superman, but I have a script tonight. Because I talked to my very good friend, close friend, pal. Justin Lapar. Oh my. And just for today, I rented the contract for this man. Ward Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That is awesome. Talk about fighting fire with fire. There are a few people that can stand up to both nasty. Ward is one of them. A great buy by the uh, SPDs. Look at the size of this guy. We're going to have a lot of beef in this ring right now. Now, I'm going to have to tell you, I would give the advantage to the STDs. Not only having Wardlow, but they are a cohesive unit. These other four individuals have never teamed on a regular basis. As Wardlow circles the ring, you got to be thinking somewhere up in heaven, or Donovan is saying, well, how much does this fall away? Oh, oh. And you just saw how impressive he was. He was trying, trying to tear this guy the ring just, apart. Trying to tear the damn ring apart. And Jess Flexor could not be happier with that. Andrew Palace, he, he doesn't know what he just saw. Interesting start to Santana Diamond's first match here. Removing the top rope. Neither rain nor snow nor broken top rope will stop this match. Well, it is a live show. What are you thinking if you're Santana Diamonds right now? Your first, first professional match. You're going up against the individuals we see in the far over there. And, and, and you got broken rings, you got a lot of a beef in the ring right now. I'll tell you who's really gonna have their hands full. That's referee Bobby Williams Potter.com extraordinaire. Well, whatever his name is, he needs to keep this match under control. How intimidated are you if the guy just walks to the ring and breaks it? That that's that's my thought. I mean, if I'm Andrew Palace right now, I'm wishing I wore the brown tights. <laughs> You know, by the end of this match, we could have one rope, maybe three turnbuckles. The ring aprons aren't going to be safe. And I was going to say, interesting enough that Wardlow's starting the match, but he makes the tag to Corey Futuristic. Looks like we're going to have to wait a little longer to see these two tangle. And did you see how he just walked over that new top rope? Wow, so did Corey Futuristic. He's, He's a big guy. a lot bigger. Wow, now this is a matchup I've been wanting to see. Are you ready? How did that David Goliath match uh, go the first time around? Uh, I think it was a tie. And that's nope. how that's gonna go. I don't think Corey Futuristic quite thought that one through. 
no, no, he's got this, he's got this. Look at that, look at the speed. That's how you wrestle in the future. And that may be how you wrestle in the present. Is the tag rope in effect in this match since there is no top rope? Um, I, I, you would assume not. I don't think Corey's making any progress here. Well, that's, there he is. That was soon, BC. Didn't quite have the momentum he wanted off of that because of the missing top rope. Oh! It was a very manly scream by Corey Futuristic. And, and well, Corey's in the wrong corner right now. They're all the wrong corner at this point. That's a very good point. Cost them halfway across the ring. You notice no one's reaching for that towel. Well, I don't think I would want to be in there with Bulk Nasty either. You know, I may not like one of his teammates, but what is he? Six foot four, six foot five, Jack to the gills. Well, it looks like he must he might want some of chest flexor here. A lot of fans here for Remy. Yeah, well, they're probably criminals. I need to point out, Corey Futuristic has not made it back to his feet yet. Well, he is a man built on being methodical. He's taking his time, uh, time, I believe. He has all the time in the world. He is from the future. Well, that is true. You know, you think with all that ability, he would maybe play some winning lottery numbers or, you know, work for world peace. Well, you use your powers your way. He uses his his way. Now, keep your eyes on this. This is going to be the first time that we're going to see Santana Diamonds in the ring. What's he got? Santana Diamonds, some good hard fists. Oh! And neck breaker. Looking impressive thus far against Brian McDowell. You know, Mr. McDowell, as I call him, man after my own heart, professional bowler and professional wrestler. Two sport, two sport out. Santana with the fisherman. As it connects into the cover. And the shoulders up. I gotta say, in this little flurry of offense, I am impressed with Santana Diamonds in the early going in this match. Well, but he, he made a cardinal mistake right there. He didn't stay on his opponent, and he's paying for it right now. And he might be smart to tag out. And there he is. Uh oh. You know, you're gonna be watching this closely as Palace tags in. of the ropes that are there. Oh, he's creative and nothing else. You know what they should do right now is they should all gang up on Andrew Palace and just, just really beat him with anything they can find. Chairs, trains, planes, automobiles. Well, I know you'd like to see that, but no matter how bad he gets beaten down, LaRusso will not get that title match tonight, so you're going to have to wait a little bit. You're right. Well, that... And well, we just Wardlow making a difference. We just saw, you know, he broke the ring, and I believe now he's gonna start Break Remy Lebay. Five minutes going by. Five minutes going by. See, and that's the advantage of having. It's really a five on one, six. Or, well, five on one, five on four, six on four. If you count Ginger out there. And Corey back in. Palace not in. allowed to tag. Held in that other corner as the STDs ravage him. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, that's uh, Remy LeVay. I saw some hair, I got confused. I, I understand, I understand completely. You know, what kind of strategy do you have going into this when everything goes off the rails? I'll 
tell you one thing. If I was in there, my strategy, stay away from Wardlow. Well, you know, you could get in there. They are short one person if you want to. I think I'm comfortable sitting here with you. STD is firmly in control right now. Well, you brought up before the advantage you have with the history of teaming together. Like you said, this Planet Bulk, this is the first time they're thrown together. And a smart move as well, getting the extra help with Wardlow. So generous of Justin Labar to friend him out like that. Another good personal friend of mine, by the way. Yeah, I bet. Where is Labar? Where, where is he tonight? Why is he not here? Anything There's actually an after party. Uh, Jay Worley from Farnsworth and myself are going. We'd, we'd invite you, but you know, it's invite only. Oh, that's all right. I would have tried to get you in were it not for the fact that I chose not to. Oh, well. <laughs> Very nice of you. Oh, big backbreaker. Very futuristic. Feeling that. What if he feels that in the future? You know, well, not wasting any time. Wardlow to the floor. And now he is just single-handedly taking care of the STD in the red. And the blind tag from Palace. Takes futuristic out right into the rail. And from behind is Ryan's. Palace. You notice Flexer from behind. Uh oh. Nasty catches him. Um, incoming for the STD. Just Flexor used as a weapon against the other STDs. And here we Whoa. go. Here we go. Wardlow. Belly to belly suplex. He just tossed him over his head like a used potato chip bag. Did you see that? That's a strong, strong man. Oh, it's going to start breaking down here now. Oh, these guys are going backstage. What does Wardlow, what, how much can Wardlow lift? Good Lord. The referee's going to have to take control here. Well. They seem to be strategizing right now. They're going for something. Oh. I thought we were going to lose the second rope there at that. Assisting Yakuza kick. Oh, they're going to die. Oh, geez. Oh, I thought they were going to land near us. I will use you as a shield. We have no problem using you as a shield. I've been used for worse things. That's nothing personal. It's just new guy prerogative. If Joe were here, I would have to be his shield. Is he so. invited to the party? Who, Joe? Yeah. No. 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 Well, then I guess I can't be too upset. Ever. Come on, drop him. Yes! 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 Pin him! Oh. Compacting the spine, but LeVay! That group. Lee Ryan's comes in from behind. Derailing LeVay with a DDT. From Diamonds! This kid might have a future here. That was until he ran into that neck breaker from chest flex. Speaking of future, where's... Oh, okay. there's Corey Futuristic over there. Uh-oh. Futuristic from behind, perhaps saving the team because if Flexer doesn't roll out of the ring here, that's all she wrote. Oh, 
it's gonna do it. Uh, boom! So not only did Planet Ball pick up the victory here, but Andrew Palace scored the pinfall. What do you have to say now? He may have scored the pinfall, but when he gets in there with LaRusso, things will be vastly different. Well, we'll wait for that time. And then maybe I'll agree with you, but I have to see it to believe it. Right now, Andrew Palace is on top. powerful as always. Mickey, still a powerhouse to be rec reckoned with. There's the bell and like you mentioned, this is sort of a best versus the best scenario as no titles are on the line. This is just to see who the better tag team is. And we got to see a uh, Eric Ecstasy's version of both the high five and the low five there on his partner. Little tap to the tuckus to uh, wish him luck, kind of. A wave hello. Stop it! Stop clapping! No, seriously, stop clapping. Mickey is not a fan. In case you forgot, Mickey's pretty powerful. <laughs> He throws a uh, idol off him like uh, like wow. yesterday's I bad. I don't think ideas. Justin Idol forgot that for one minute. Here's the tie up, and again, Justin Idol slammed down. Maybe it's time to bring in Eric Ecstasy. A little bigger, little stronger, little uh, 
Oh, well, nipples out. We're supposed to call what we see, aren't we? All right. So what I see right now are the headlights are on. Next to see a little bigger, a little stronger than his partner. I'm going to try this again. Looking to get a, uh, an advantage in there. Now a little strategy. A brotherly moment there. He doesn't want any part of that. I mean, I guess technically it was a it was a waist lock. It was a wrestling hold. It's not like CJ can tell him to stop. Sadly. And now Mickey's behind. Oh! Well, that's one way to get him off of you. Uh, there ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. I heard that once. And the actions of sexual harassment look to be getting in the head here of Mickey as he's getting frustrated. It looks like he just wants to fight. And, and he may be fed up. to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> and just as quick as he tags in, he tags out. So Mickey back and and another tag, those fresh tags keeping the Gambinos uh, in and out. <laughs> and always having a fresh man. Nope. Yeah. And Mickey walks away. He does not want tagged in. Eric Ecstasy doing some uh, Hindi squats in the corner there, getting ready. He said he wanted to wrestle. He's getting in the ready position. Oh, he's ready. Well, you said you wanted him to get ready to wrestle. But what do you expect? Well, I don't know how smart this is. Looks like Marshall's going to get down. Mar Marshall going with the lower position. I seems don't know. The, the amateur background at all. Seems I don't be, know that I'd take that route. Seems to be confident, though. Come on, well, he wants the rest. Come on. Oh! <laughs> Tried to warn his brother, Mickey tried to warn him. You don't see that too much in the amateurs. <laughs> They're both heavy. Oh! There's time for fun again. A little uh, too deep into the moment there, perhaps, for Gambino. Yeah, that dance routine got interrupted by a quick run. Tag to idle. Close line knocks Mickey off his feet. Justin back to the corner. Hard elbow into the corner. Here comes the whip. Oh, and the assist from Ecstasy. Diving elbow. I believe that was the first pin cover of the match. The, uh, Idol trying to say that's three. Uh, uh, Idol. Five minutes gone by. Five minutes gone by. Good job, Breaker. As the Gambino brothers take control. You may not know this. Originally, they were a moving company. Then they diversified. 
Yeah. And they made some moves here in IWC over the years. Absolutely, multi-time uh, tag champs. And yeah, two of the meanest sons of guns you'd ever want to see. I wouldn't get on their bad side. And the ref heard the tag, even though there wasn't one, so. It was the Phantom Audio tag. Well, that didn't work. Now misfire. Right into Justin Idol. And now the chops in the corner. I don't think that's... I, uh, I took it for him. I think, I'm not quite sure what... To, oh! That's a lot of weight in the corner. I don't, I um, I don't, oh, double forearms launched off his partner. We can, we can call that. I know, I know the name for that move. Idol seems to be hurt as he lets Mickey go past and make the tag. Marshall now the legal man in. Oh, a good kick to, the kick to the back, and that looked like it just woke him up a little bit. Marshall Gambino is fired up. Fired up? He's angry. And you don't want to be—you don't want to be around an angry bull. Trust me. Oh, right to the side of the head. An ecstasy. Here, what's he doing now? He's sneaking up. Be quiet. Now he got caught. And now he's sneaking back. Be quiet. What a spine buster there from Mickey. Shades of Arn Anderson. Marshall into the cover. He got the shoulder up, but he didn't kick out. Not much left in the tank. Oh! Right into the ribs. There's no muscle to protect your ribs. Well, when you're trying to catch your breath and you take a shot to the ribs, it certainly doesn't do you any favors. No, not at all. And now grinding back on that point of impact. The Gambino is playing it smart, making sure that uh, Idol can't get to a tag. Next to see the the fresher man. God, I, I feel that that's going to come back to haunt me when I say stuff about him. Marshall back in. Notice the frequent tags between the brothers. the face. Idol fighting his way out. Big Bulldog. And now both men down. Eric Ecstasy trying to get the crowd back in the corner of sexual harassment, but his partner is no worse for the wear as he's down. But Marshall is also. Who's going to get to their feet first here? Marshall's working his way up. Mickey. He takes down Marshall. He takes down Mickey. He's fighting the whole Gambino family solo at this point. Whoa. And a bionic elbow takes Marshall down. Oh, flip flop and fly there. Ah, referee CJ Sensation, the wrong place at the wrong time. And now it's time someone's going to take advantage of this. Here comes Mickey with a steel chair. Mickey Come on Mark now. Going back to their old ways. Trying to play some well, so far, classic Eddie Guerrero games here. Well, Who's going to get caught with it? And someone's left holding it. There it is. <laughs> all four men down. Vicious chair attack by all four men. How do you call this one, Nick? 
Well, you don't. The ref has no idea what happened, so I'm guessing he's just going to let it go. They're all looking to see what the call is. Idol really selling the chair, making sure the ref knows someone hit him. They. And now this is, this is what the fans are into. They are words. They're arguing, come on! Yeah, but whose word is referee CJ Sensation gonna believe here? Let's uh, maybe they can talk it out. Nope. Like I guess this one's just gonna keep going here, Jay. Ten minutes gone by. Ten minutes gone by. And uh, Marshall hit a low blow with Eric Ecstasy. I don't think the referee saw it. The old Sicilian reset button, if you know what I mean. Things not going your way, there's a quick advantage to be found. I don't blame them, I'd be scared of that too. Well, they don't know what's coming when they turn around. Oh, oh. oh good lord. And that's a flying bull. 300 pounds of Gambino soaring through the air. Rolling Idol back in the ring. And now from a mounted position, just raining down on him. And the Tiger Bomb. And the kick out! I thought that was it. We've seen him win quite a few matches with that Tiger Driver. I don't think Justin Idol has any idea where he is right now. He has taken a tremendous amount of punishment. Yeah, when a man the size of Marshall Gambino lot falls on you, 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 you don't just walk away from him. Oh, look out! Ran right into it. He has him up. Oh! He assist. One, two, three. Oh, no! Marshall, I thought that was it. And Nick of time able to break up the cover. Marshall with that hard clothesline takes Idol down again. And he did it. Sexual harassment used to being done with the match after the happy ending, if you know what I mean. And the Gambino's calling for it. 15 minutes gone by. 15 minutes gone by. Spinebuster right on the knees. Classic Gambino. And this is it. Curse of the Gambino. Maybe with the elbow. He's gonna do it. Wait a minute, there's head tie. Head tie's in there and Dennis Gregory's in there also. What's going on here? When you want to discuss the, the greatest ref or the greatest tag teams, you can't forget about the founding fathers. I guess they feel like maybe they were left out of this equation, Jay. Well, they just put themselves in it. We'll call it forcible math. Now all three of these teams it's all try broken to down. take each other's heads off. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest has been ruled a no contest. Well, no winner here, but... With a cry of, come here, idiot. Eric Ecstasy and, and Marshall the Bull. Oh, no. Yeah, he's not going to suplex him out of the ring, is oh, he? Oh, no. And Ecstasy fighting his way out of that precarious situation. Yes, he's winding up. Oh, oh and he laid a fat one on him. Lands 
on the table. I don't know that that could have ended any yeah, worse. Yeah, it looks Marshall. like this is going to oh, be a little worse right now. Oh, and there it goes. The weight of Eric Ecstasy, that table couldn't hold them both, and that table collapses between the weight of Ecstasy and Gambino. Oh, he did go through the table. Well, no winner here, but you better believe these three teams will be seeing each other down the road, just like they have in the past. I get the feeling that this is far from over, but the next chapter was written tonight here at Proving Ground. You just hope Marshall's okay. Gambino's not making any friends here tonight in Royal Valley, that's for sure. Oh, I would not, if I were this crowd, I would not start yelling at the Gambinos after they didn't get a win. That's, that's just, that's just throwing a match into gasoline. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first to be making their way to the ring, accompanied by Ray Lynn from Indianapolis, Indiana. Currently on the Platinum World Tour, weighing in 203 pounds, for Justin Bieber of Professional Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, this is still the last year and winner takes all in December. He did lose the Super Indie Championship on that night, but that night that match ended up being named Match of the Year. So he's a loser, but he's a winner in the same night. I don't know what he's going to do tonight facing Shane in your face. He's going to do what he always does. Shine. Notice Ray Lynn has a uh, some sort of cast on her hand. I, I don't know what's up with that. Did you hear anything about that? I, not as of yet. I know she's slated for action. And his opponent, weighing at 215 pounds from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is a former undefeated professional MMA player. Oh, here they come with another debut. IWC debut right now, it's Shane in your face. Called for, but now 
before we start this match, all of you people need to show me the same respect you'd show Justin Bieber. Another good luck kiss. He's gonna, he must have, he's gonna have a lot of luck tonight. They've been kissing the, the entire time. Well, we know who the crowd favorite is as we get ready for the bell. As I said, Bostick, the former Super Indy Champion. And some quick rehydration before the match begins. Well, he's making Shane wait. Dylan knows what he's doing. Absolutely. I will point out this is not a Shane's first time in a ring, just in a pro wrestling ring. He has had a uh, MMA background, but this is his first, I believe, pro wrestling match here in IWC. Shane extending the hand there. Oh, Austin yeah. didn't want any of that. Yeah, well, no. I think he would have done his research, knowing that that wouldn't work. He's quick. Yet. Both men circling, sort of feeling each other out here. I think this is all just part of the plan from Dylan Bostic. Well, I think Dylan Bostic knows he's at a disadvantage if he ends up in a clinch with him. So he's feeling him out, he's taking a look. Dylan, outside the ring, get a, get a minute. Maybe have uh, a Ray Lynn take a look at that nose. He might need another kiss. Oh, yeah, he did. And I think Shane in your face, he's, he's getting a little tired of this time wasted by Boston. Shane wants to go. Sure, that's not what he's used to, but... It's a different world here in pro wrestling. He's going to have to learn to adapt to that. Well, Dylan's a good guy to teach him. Uh oh. That'll be the advantage of mounting him. An amateur wrestling that's known as a wizard. And now works his way out to a wrist lock. Reversal from Shane, really twerking. And Boston desperately looking to get to the ropes, but Shane is planted center of the ring. You see there, a little assist. Ray Lynn tried to grab the hand of Boston, pull him towards the ropes, and that would have had to be a break. But That was just for emotional support. And there we go. Headlock takedown. No! That might be what Bostick needs to do to the bigger man here. Wear him down. Smart. And Shane's not taking any more this time. He's going to go after him. And Shane, uh, confronting him, Amber Lynn, <laughs> Ray Lynn got in the way there. <laughs> and hold on, hold on. Time out. Time out, everyone. Are we back? Are we in? Are we in? I guess we're back. What was that a 15 second? How many does he get? Nick, how many timeouts does he get? Well, you know, the, the historian would tell you zero. Well, that doesn't seem fair. He already had one. Toss and Dylan back outside. 
And once again, the waiting game. You can tell Shane is not used to this start and stop methodology. He may not be used to it, but he is impressive here in the early on. Dylan, for being as young as he is, has been rather is rather wily. He understands what can work here. Let's, oh. And again, using Ray Lynn to the advantage, even with that cast on her hand. And the more I see that cast, I wonder what the situation is going to be later because Ray Lynn is set to face Britt Baker here tonight. Is yeah. that match going to happen? It's a very yeah, that's a very fair question. I'm not sure. I mean, she doesn't look like she's in wrestling gear yet. might just be giving them a little leeway. It's a big match. Oh, 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 oh. oh. echo Wet throughout Laurel Valley. Out. Have you ever been chopped? Just by my wife. Right. I've taken a few to the chest on occasion. Let me tell you. Five hurts. minutes gone by. Five minutes gone by. If they hit hard enough, it leaves a huge welt. You might have trouble breathing the next day. Roll through by Shane in your face. Oh, and that's a good count. Oh boy, and a kick out from Boston. Drop kick right to the face. With that roll up there, Shane might know a little more than we're giving him credit for. And right Lynn coming to ringside with the chair. A waist, what, is that a waist lock applied to Shane in your face? Like I said, trying to wear him down. What ethnicity is that in your face? Is that Russian? Am I saying it right? Is it in your face? <laughs> oh, a good blow to the back, right to the kidneys. You get hit in the kidneys and the spine, it just shuts you down. Smart move by Boston. He knows he doesn't quite, he doesn't have the strength to match him, so he keeps him grounded with, with whatever else he can use, such as a good kidney punch. And keep in mind, the last time we saw Boston here in IWC, he did lose that Super Indy title, like I was saying. If he wins this match, that could put him in contention again, or maybe even for the World Championship if he wants to get there right there. Oh, absolutely. Another polling of the crowd. He's and now Shane, uh, a dragon. Oh, I think he might have been looking for a dragon sleeper. Wants to choke him out. It's the MMA background. Oh. And Dylan with the Irish whip reverse. And the spine buster, and now mount him on top with the right hands. Double leg pick. And now just raining down on him. Body slam from Shane in your face into the cover. Two and a kick out from Bostic. Not enough yet. But Bostic, Bostic needs to figure out something. He can't keep taking Oh! German, but he hangs on. He's gonna hit him with the second. Germans. Another one and he holds on again. We're gonna see the trifecta here. He can just keep hitting these. Wear Bostic out. And you see Bostic trying to get a hold of the ropes to defend that move any way he can, but it didn't work. Kick out from Bostic. And now Shane. Trying to figure out what, it, what else he's going to have to hit him with. Oh! Good Makes leg sweep. Legs. 
and he was looking to start hammering down some blows. And what, what is she doing here? Bad news, Ray Lynn's on the apron. And a rookie mistake by Shane in your face going to tend to Ray Lynn instead of keeping his focus on the match, Jay. Well, it, it's a smart move by the Platinum World Tour. And there we go. Handful of tights. Almost got him to win. And now there's that MMA background. Look at those kicks. And a, there he's going for that dragon going sleeper for that again. dragon sleeper again. What's that gonna do for Bostic's ego if he taps out to Shane here tonight? Good dude. I don't know that anything can just oh! the legs! He has the legs hooked, that could be it! And Ray Lynn again on the apron! Get Ray her Lynn. off of there! Smart move by Bostic's Ray Lynn. tapping Bostic's out and the referee tapping. doesn't see it! Bostic tapped out! It. Shane in your face, he thinks he's won this match. There was no bell because the referee didn't see it. And another rookie mistake tending to Ray Lynn. And Bostick up. Has him up. Swaggy D. Kick no. Out. You gotta be kidding me. He kicked Ten out. Ten minutes gone by. Ten minutes gone by. Crowd really getting behind Shane as Bostic pulls him to closer to the corner. Going up top. And Shane gets out of the way. Bostic lands hard on his back and Shane's to his feet first. What are we going to see here? Back uh, again to the sleeper. And he has it locked in. And again, Ray Lynn trying to get involved. And there's the tap. Again, Bostic taps out. The referee in bad position. What a heartbreak for Shane in your face. He's now won this match twice, Jay. Bostic pulling out a chair. What the hell is this? End of the gut right with the chair. The and a gut across the back. You gotta be kidding me. Hits him with the chair across the back, and he's gonna get the and victory. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is 10 10. The Platinum World Tour rolls on as Dylan Boskin picks up the win. And you gotta feel for this guy, Shane. A lot of people here in attendance to see this kid's debut, and he got cheated here tonight at Proving Ground. And they're checking on Shane in your face. Dylan wants to make sure he's okay. Boston gets his win here tonight at Proving Ground, but now comes the focus of what is going on with that hand. Britt Baker scheduled to be out here, and, oh. and, I, and here we go. Spoke too soon, Jay. like us here, Jay. She's a little stiff for the injury. Blah, blah, Britt, really? Insulting you? You insult me with what you call wrestling. Listen, honey, I'd love to put the pause on you tonight. I would love nothing more than to beat you down in this ring. But for real, girl, this is broken. So, I went out and I found someone that hates you just as much as I do. Allow me to introduce her. Rockefeller from behind Morgan Rockefeller and looks like Britt Baker a local standout we've never seen her in IWC well this is her chance and apparently now taking on Britt Baker tonight 
Well, whether she faces Ray Lynn or Morgan Rockefeller, Britt Baker came here tonight to compete, and that's what she's gonna do. There's the bow. Let's see, let's see how uh, Morgan Rockefeller can handle Brentsburg. Such a breakout year in 2015 for Britt. Hoping to see more big things from her here in 2016. Good hammer lock. And Morgan with the switch into the side headlock. Back and forth working the arms. You know, women can be vicious. I'm just putting that out there. Well, you don't have to tell me that's worse. Also, I have it on good authority. They both think I'm pretty hot. Just saying. Oh, I have not heard that. Well, you haven't done your research. Come prepared next time, Nick. Nice. Thanks, nice for, the, thanks for the advice. Maybe, maybe next month I'll be uh, more prepared. I would hope so. And Morgan back on top, holding that hammer lock, just pushing her head into the mat. <laughs> I like it when they get mean. Full Nelson, trying to get it locked in. I don't know that she has a fully cinch. Brick fighting it. Why don't you get in there and help her? Oh, that wouldn't be very sportsmanlike. Help which one? I'll take them both. I'm hardcore. And leave Whoa. me solo on my first broadcast? That seem very fair. Lancashire style. Escaping and now a good headlock. You know who had a good headlock? Andy Kaufman. That, go that guy could hold a headlock. Off to the ropes. Oh, Britt. Oh, Britt scouted it. Oh. Into the cover. And a kick out from Morgan. A nice roll through pin with a bridge there. And now Britt. And there's the Edge. Oh! Even when they're not involved in the match, the Platinum World Tour getting involved where they don't need to. And Morgan taking advantage, making sure that uh, the work's being done outside. Oh, oh, wait a minute, there's Shane. Shane's back. Shane, Shane right is chasing Boston. Right Shane's going to run off Boston. And he got him. He oh, caught him by the heel. No, 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 no. Boston still gets away. Morgan taking advantage of the confusion. Keep in mind, we still have a match going on. Morgan taking advantage of the confusion. A good shot to the face. Take advantage. Put the, there we go. Deep thrusts into the corner. And Dylan has returned. With Ray Lynn. Well, yeah, where there's Dylan, there's Ray Lynn. A one count. Britt still has a lot of fight in her. Well, it seems to me if Ray Lynn, Ray Lynn can't do the damage herself, she at least wants to be here to watch it. Absolutely. Oh, and choking her with the top rope. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. This is two matches in a row here. Someone needs to step in and do something. It's almost a three on one against Britsburg. And now Morgan pushing the ref out of the way. How is Britt supposed to get back into this match? Everywhere she turns, she has someone else looking over her shoulder, ready to take her out. Well, here's the thing about winners. They win. No matter what the circumstances, no matter how unfair it is, if you're good enough, you find a way. Well, I, I can't argue with you there. Not at all. Backed into the corner and some night a good chop across the chest. A better chop Ooh, across the chest. Hear that. 
into the other corner. Take notice, wherever Britt goes, Ray Lynn and Bostick are following her around the ring, ready to talk that trash. Morgan pushes CJ Sensation out of the way. Now another hard whip into the corner. Britt looks Gets the feet up, but she caught it. Luck to counter. A good kick to the back. And then what do we have here? Five Some sort of submission. She's only going to have five on the ropes there before the ref has to break it. The old tarantula rule. And as it turns out, gravity is still in effect. Thank you, Morgan, for checking one for us. Morgan with a, with a cover precariously close to the ropes. Tana here could be a big boot coming. She gets out of the way. Like and Britt with, with, with the feet. Britt needs to get her momentum, get back in this match, and forget about Ray Lynn and Bostick at ringside. Focus on Morgan. There we go. She's trying to, trying to focus. And now there's Dylan. What is Bostick doing on the ropes? Buying Morgan a little time. Mm, sure is. And up big swing from Brett. Side rush and light. Oh! Into the pin cover. And Bostic on the apron. These two need to go. Somebody needs to get them out of here. Here comes Shane again. Shane in your face is out here Look again. Look at the submission. Morgan locked into submission. The referee's trying to get Shane out of the ring, and Britt has to be forced to break the cover. Shane trying to get his hands on Bostic, but Britt Baker doesn't want his help. If anything, that cost her the win there. Oh, and there we go again. Back into the submission. Submission possible. Raylin looks like she's thinking about doing something. Morgan gonna tap here. She has that arm barred. And look at Brent looking back at Ray Wynn. And that's it. There it is. The tap out. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is 10 Brent Baker. Well, still a victory here tonight at Proving Ground, but not as sweet as victory as she thought she was gonna get coming in here, thinking she was gonna get her hands on Ray Wynn. Well, it may not be sugar, but it'll have to be sweet enough until Ray Lynn's healed and back in the ring. This isn't over between either of them. You just have to wonder when that hand is healed, will we see that final encounter? Now Shane asking for a mic. He's going to address this hometown Not crowd. Give it up for Brit. Bostic, Bostic, Bostic. I was this close. Lucky for you, next month is the 15th anniversary. March 12th, court time. Be there. You're tapping. Is that a challenge? I think Shane just laid out a challenge for next month at the 15th anniversary show. Could we see the rematch? Nick, that wasn't a challenge, that was a promise. Championship. You want to talk about a standout in 2015? Darren De Niro, the man who has it all. He's got the look, he's got the ability, he's got the personality. He's finally free of VIP Joe Rosa. He said he wanted to strike out on his own. Here it is. Darren De Niro challenging for 
for the IWC World Heavyweight Championship. Keep in mind, he gets this match due to winning that Battle Royal, and winner takes off. for this opportunity. He, he definitely earned it. Because as I said before, championship opportunities do not come along that often. Darren De Niro saw a chance to grab that ring, brass ring as they call it, and he did. So there's the bell. Oh, and they, they shook hands. That well, and two bucks will get you a cup of coffee. This is for the title. Well, you Respect, know what? friendship, that, all of that's great, but it doesn't get you the title. And to tie up this match officially underway. And De Niro, clean break, backs out of the corner. Say they're feeling each other out here. That takes them into the corner. And there, clean break. Clean break. Well, that's how this match starts. Keep in mind, you like you said, this is for the IWC Championship. This yeah. things might change as time goes on. It's it's only a matter of time before someone realizes what's at stake, realizes what it's worth to, to them as far as try getting it. So, both of these men are thinking I'm walking out of here with the title tonight. At some point, that hunger, that desperation is going to click in. And I guarantee you're, you're going to see less and less clean breaks. You notice nuts with the uh, jumping jacks after, showing that he's just getting warmed up. You now looking for a let, for a, an arm lock there on Darren De Niro. Back to the ropes. Doesn't look like he has it locked in all the way. Is De Niro trying to? 
break them off, and they do. You'll notice that wasn't a quick break. He rode that out for the full four. Off the ropes, here comes Nuts. Drop down. And a nice toss. And again from Nuts. Take down and a quick kick out. Nuts follows suit. And these fans showing the respect they have for these two wrestlers here tonight. I think this could go either way. Oh, definitely. Darren De Niro is, a, is an excellent competitor. I would put him against anyone in this locker room. I would not be surprised if we see gold on Darren De Niro sooner rather than later. It may even be as soon as tonight. Shoulder to. And Nuts might have hit his head off the back of that mat. As Darren said, I've lifted a weight or two. Putting that bulk to good use. And again, back to the corner. Oh! Up, taking him to the top. De Niro lifts him. Oh. oh! What did I say? Oh! And his leg got hooked up on the ropes. Yeah, as he came down, he may have sprained that knee, may have torn something. Well, this could change oh. the whole complexity of the match if not his hurt here. Feet. Oh! Caught him with the kick! I don't think Nuts was playing possum, but I think he had eyes in the back of his head to know that De Niro was coming. Well, when he heard the when he heard this, uh, the footsteps start getting faster. Your first thing you, when you hear when you hear who's you think horses, not zebras. He was probably thinking the, the dive, and he had the counter ready. That's why you watch tapes. That's why you strategize. That's why you. That's why the. The match is won every bit as much in, in the preparation as it is in the ring. Speaking of in the ring, I was going to say these guys better get in the ring. The ref's at a six count. Nuts rolls in to break that up. And the ref. Which is awful generous of Nuts, being that he can take the uh, count out and still win. Absolutely. Oh! Right on the apron. Hardest part of the ring. Absolutely. The most unforgiving part of the ring, I was going to say, Funko. Nothing but steel and the end of wood. So you're just hitting a corner that does not give it all. Five minutes gone by. Five minutes gone by. A couple hard shots and trading them. Oh, look out. You've got to be kidding me. The belly to belly suplex. And I think he suplexed him over the rail. Over the rail and into the crowd. Kids, get your picture with current champ Jimmy Nuts while you can. Better yet, kids, just get the hell out of the way. He may not be the champ at the end of this. The champ does not want to take too many of those. Nuts hard over the rail. So much for that technically sound, respect-filled match we were talking about before. I told you it would break down eventually. Not see, still favoring that. Looks like it could be his knee. We know how vicious, how conniving both of these men can be. But they've shown it in their past. Hard elbow from De Niro. Just because they know each other, just because they, they may have some respect for each other. Oh! Doesn't mean that Darren De Niro won't kick the nose off Jimmy Nuts if it'll get him the title. And it might right now. And the kick out from Nuts. And De Niro wrapping those legs around, building the pressure, the momentum. There we go, into a great run. Yeah. 
Nuts trying to fight out of it with the elbows. De Niro has that hold locked on pretty tight though, it looks like. He also has a little bit of distance, so he can he can try and lessen the effect of the elbows by leaning back if he keeps throwing them. Nuts just powering out. Strength of Jimmy Nuts lifting up Darren De Niro. And right on the back. That finally got De Niro to break the hold. had it scouted. Looking for a discus elbow. Nuts face first into the corner. Oh, hard shot to the back of the head into the German release suplex. But Nuts is up. It almost bounced him right through his feet. But that might have been the last little bit of energy Jimmy Nuts had, and he might have just used it. That's fine if, you're, if that's how he has to expend it. I'm, Better to use it that way than just falling on your back. Now giving himself some breathing time as De Niro slow to his feet. Boot right into Darren De Niro's solar plexus. Oh, oh. Hard elbow out of the corner. Solo. That might have stunned De Niro. Nuts off the ropes. And another hard shot. Sends him into the ropes. De Niro still has fight. Oh! Solid spine buster. Jimmy Nuts is feeling it now. De Niro slow to his feet. Jimmy Nuts measuring him. Here he comes, and scouted by De Niro. Nuts saw it coming, but still got taken down with the clothesline. He braced for it, and that's the power of Darren De Niro. He just went right through him. He didn't throw that clothesline to connect. He threw to connect six inches behind his target, Bruce Lee style. And now Nuts laying prone. Arrow going to the top. What are we going to see here? Dineros keeping his balance. Oh, the centaur nuts rolled out of the way. Look at the look on the face of Darren De Niro. You can tell that took something out of him. Oh, that hurts. The face tells the Ten whole story. Ten minutes gone by. Ten minutes gone by. And nuts to his feet finally. With the scissors kick, right to the back of the head. He needs to get into the cover here, Jay. Got him. No. Didn't really. He had the leg, but he didn't really have the weight pulled up over. You got to get that center of gravity over the shoulders. and De Niro just trading shots from the knees. Just who's going to buckle first here, Jay? Well, you got to wonder how much is left in the tank with those shots. I mean, they're starting to pick up the intensity now, but... But you keep in mind, each shot takes more and more out of each one of these individuals. Exactly. Oh, there we go. Step into it, kid. Nice uppercut. Going through Jimmy Nuts, taking him down, straddling the ropes here. Oh! And De Niro picking up speed. Oh, short spear! Into the cover! And Jimmy Nuts keeps, kicks out again, saving his World Heavyweight Championship. De Niro thought he had it there. He's got to wonder what, he's got to start wondering now. How much does he have left in the tank and what's it going to take? 
Took a long time for Jimmy Nuts to get that world championship, but at the same time, it took a lot for Darren De Niro to get to this point, to this match here in the main event of Proving Ground. He had to go through a whole battle royal full of men to get the shot. He's not gonna waste it. But again, turns around and ducks. Oh! Huge cutter and De Niro standing. In the one. De Niro may be out. It. And that does it. Jimmy Nuts is still the IWC champion. What a match. Gotta tip your hat here tonight to Darren De Niro. What an effort in his first world championship opportunity. Jimmy Nuts finally gets to concentrate on being a champion. And there's the results. Well, they say you win the belt and it's harder to keep it. Jimmy Nuts in his first title defense is still the IWC champion. He's on his way. Darren De Niro showed everyone why he earned that title shot tonight. And you know what? Somewhere down the road, you got to believe De Niro's going to get another opportunity. I absolutely believe that. A show of respect now as Nuts picks De Niro up. Great match, two great wrestlers, and a great show here tonight at Proving Ground. Ladies and gentlemen, Proving Ground 5 has reached its conclusion. We are a few short weeks away from the 15th anniversary of IWC. We hope to see you there. Nick, anything you want to say to the kids before we sign off? Well, it was a pleasure being a part of IWC. I'm looking forward to my future here working with IWC. Tonight was a hell of a show. Looking forward to the 15th anniversary, Jay. For Nick Lindell, I'm Jay Worthington Farnsworth. Have a good night, kids.